Reporter, Good Day Bible Story Enthusiasts, everyone welcome. My name is Storyteller and today on our channel Simply Audio Runs we speak with Jesus Yes you heard right. Jesus is in the house today. Stories of his birth about his birth, his parents and more. I am encouraging you to listen to this story carefully. Get the message from the story and apply it to life. Not just listen but use these lessons. Today's lesson is Jesus coming so we can have life and have it more abundantly. Today's story is from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 38. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, also known as Jesus of Nazareth or simply Jesus, is the central figure of Christianity and one of the most influential individuals in human history. According to the New Testament of the Bible, Jesus was born in Bethlehem to the Virgin Mary through divine intervention. His birth, which is widely celebrated as Christmas, fulfilled numerous prophecies of the Messiah, the promised deliverer of Israel. During his early years, Jesus grew up in Nazareth, a small town in Galilee, where he developed both physically and spiritually. As a young man, he gained wisdom and knowledge, astonishing those who heard his teachings in the synagogue. Can you pick up from here Jesus? Yes Mr. Storyteller, I really appreciate what you are doing. Around the age of 30, I began my public ministry, embarking on a mission to proclaim the kingdom of God, to teach profound spiritual truths, and to perform miracles. I traveled throughout the region of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, drawing large crowds with my powerful teachings, healing the sick, raising the dead, and performing other remarkable signs. Your teachings emphasized love, compassion, forgiveness, and the importance of a personal relationship with God. I challenged religious authorities, criticized hypocrisy, and called for a deeper understanding of God's law. My parables, such as the Good Samaritan and the Prodigal Son, conveyed moral lessons and spiritual truths. One of the most significant events in my life was the selection of twelve disciples, whom I taught and mentored, preparing them to continue my mission after my departure. These disciples witnessed your miracles, heard your teachings, and received private instruction to comprehend the deeper meaning of your message. As my popularity grew, so did opposition from religious leaders who felt threatened by my influence. Ultimately, this led to my betrayal by one of my own disciples, Judas Iscariot, who handed me over to the authorities. Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion took place in Jerusalem. Despite your innocence, you willingly endured the suffering and agony of crucifixion sacrificing yourself as the ultimate atonement for the sins of humanity. This event, known as the Crucifixion, is commemorated on Good Friday. However, the story of Jesus does not end with your death. On the third day after your crucifixion, you rose from the dead, establishing victory over sin and death. This event, known as the Resurrection, is celebrated as Easter and is considered the cornerstone of Christian faith. After my resurrection, I appeared to my disciples, providing further instruction and evidence of my victory over death. I then ascended into heaven, promising to send the Holy Spirit as a comforter and guide to my followers. The life of Jesus Christ of Nazareth had a profound impact on the world. His teachings and example continue to inspire millions of people to this day. The principles of love, compassion, forgiveness, and selflessness that he taught form the foundation of Christian faith and have influenced countless individuals, societies, and cultures throughout history. The story of Jesus is a testament to the power of faith, the triumph of good over evil, and the limitless love of God. I should hope that my life and teachings serve as a beacon of hope and an invitation for all to experience a transformative relationship with God, guiding people toward a life of purpose, meaning, and eternal salvation. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to enroll themselves, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to David's city, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to enroll himself with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him as wife, being pregnant. While we were there, the day had come for me to give birth. I gave birth to my firstborn son. I wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for us in the inn. 
Eyewitness reports say that there were shepherds in the same country staying in the field, and keeping watch by night over their flock. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be to all the people. For there is born to you today, in David's city, a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. This is the sign to you, you will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. When the angels went away from them into the sky, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem, now, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They came with haste and found both Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the feeding trough. When they saw it, they publicized widely the saying which was spoken to them about this child. All who heard it wondered at the things which were spoken to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these sayings, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, just as it was told them. When eight days were fulfilled for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the days of their purification according to the law of Moses were fulfilled, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to me by the Holy Spirit that I should not see death before I had seen the Lord's Christ. I went in the Spirit into the temple. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, that they might do concerning him according to the custom of the law, then I received him into my arms and blessed God, and said, Now you are releasing your servant, Master, according to your word, in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light for revelation to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and his mother were marveling at the things which were spoken concerning him. Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which is spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity, and she had been a widow for about eighty-four years, who didn't depart from the temple, worshipping with fastings and petitions night and day. Coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to the Lord, and spoke of him to all those who were looking for redemption in Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us today, remember if it is not Jesus, we serve no one at all. He is the great I am that I am. See you next time for another Bible story.